So, my dear Libra, the Earth has continued its path and we see behind the Sun now the constellation Sagittarius. Sagittarius is the blending of duality and is giving the light to the Moon, which is now in your sign, and you are the scaling of duality. Blending, scaling, right? Ruled by Jupiter, ruled by Venus, the ninth house of philosophy and the seventh house of relationship. We recognize then here these two energies coming together. It can be something quite magnificent, right? Expanding, grander. That's all Jupiter. And then you into beauty, into love. And so we hope that this is coming up in this reading. The yoga position for Sagittarius is Paschimottanasana. Find your own guardian angel, your own hugeness deep within you. And here for you, I gave you the squat, standing on your tiptoes, holding yourself in your own balance, in front of your heart, right? Understanding that justice doesn't exist in nature. It's only that scaling, that balancing out exists, right? Because if we come completely into the center, death occurs, right? You are the queen of swords. And here we see how you cut off the head. You're very sharp. You're very bright. And your guiding beacon is the sword. And that sword can cut, right? verbally cut, mentally even cut, right? And so you are very intense in that sense. Is your birthday between September 12th and October 12th? Then is she your court card? If not, look in the description below. I have listed all the cards that I'm using and of course all the court cards dates. And so you can check if you are before or after, right, the Queen of Swords. Back to your last reading, Scorpio Sun gave your Libra Moon the light. Aries, your opposite sign, is part of your destiny. You got Aries twice coming up, once reversed here in the Mother Peace Tarot. And then here, I'm going to tip because it's a little bright, the light that I have here for my face. We see Aries again here on the position of the world. And so you had Aries reversed and Aries upright, which was a very interesting reading I remember now. I think it's great that I can remember through the pictures that I post in front the last reading because everything is cyclical. And so I want you to see that we're not just doing a reading and then Oh, well, let's do another reading. I do the reading also exactly on the day the moon is in your sign, right? So you feel this, right? You feel this and I feel it and I can bring it to you. And also what's important is that I don't want to be a future teller. I am giving you the reading actually after. Right? I'm not giving you the reading ahead. Now, with our temperance, right, the blending, Jupiter-based or ruled, we also have the Wheel of Fortune that is connected with Jupiter. And so I want to see what is the Wheel of Fortune telling you. And we're going to look into the Oracle of Mystical Moments. And see what the Wheel of Fortune is wanting to bring you. Right? What grander, what can you become? Right? What's your destiny to become? So we have the perfect key. The number 29. And... You have a cage with a heart in it. 
Is this your heart? Is this someone else's heart? You have a bird who has a lot of keys, but apparently you found the key to this heart. And so when we put the 10 above, the wheel of fortune right here in the golden dawn tarot that I gave you, each zodiac sign has their own deck, right? And so you got the golden dawn. And here we can see the sphinx, the higher mind, the wheel, and here the monkey mind. And so it's really interesting, the monkey mind or then the ego mind that is here cut off, right? It's kind of like that's what we're trying to eliminate in our life, right? We want to be clear and strong. And so here comes then with the 29, if I calculate it together, I get an 11, a portal. With the 10, I get a 39, then I get a 12. The 12 zodiac signs, right? The 12 is also the hanged man. You are now there, able to open the cage, right? Where this heart is inside. And you can give yourself now a new love, right? A love that maybe is giving you more power than you ever think of. Of course, then the 12 becomes the 3, and the 3 is then, of course, the Empress. If I do not calculate, of course, them together, I have here the 29 and 11 plus the 1. It's actually then a 3 times 1 portal. 3 times 1 means be empowered in the 1 and only key to the heart. Be empowered to the one and only thought, right? That is coming here to you through the wheel of fortune. So it's beginning pretty beautiful. I leave it up to you how you want to calculate these numbers together. I do a lot with the numbers because they don't lie. They're very clear, they're very mathematical, correct. A picture can sometimes influence you, but a, a number is like strong, right? And so just that you know, I work with the numbers very clearly. On the position of the fool comes the ace of swords. Now this is your sword. Here you're holding the sword up, right? And here the sword is coming down. So here you summoning the energy up. You want to show here as well the sword is pointing up right but now the sword is coming down there is a clear thought coming to you a very honest thought and of course the fool is facing here the left right and today the reading is going to the right that you can see on the error that i'm placing now here in this little box right the error shows you that we're going now to the full moon which you have in Aries right and that's why Aries your opposite sign is part of your destiny because that's where you're going and so here comes a very clear thought to you and the one and the zero is a ten again so Uranus which is ruling the fool is bringing you here through the Wheel of Fortune, the one. Then you have four times the one. Four times the one, your heart here in the cage is freed, right? You can open that cage. You don't need these other keys anymore. You have the key to your own heart. You have it. And so this is the message that is coming directly from the fool to you. On the position of the magician comes here the blade. Look at that. So we have a sword pointing down. We have a blade facing up, up to the magician. And he holds all four elements, the sword, the wand, the pentacle and the cups. And so the blade is pointing to the table, right? And then, of course, 
to the magician as that empowered mercury ruled energy here's the information here's the power he's delivering whatever you need and here the number is the number six so the six and the one creates the seven here the sixth chakra right or the lovers is being clear being focused to a higher consciousness but also bringing that higher consciousness down so now you have a down and an up whatever comes down you will bring it up again and so you know that the magician is bringing you that information an information that you know that this one blade that this one sword right if we do not see now the six here then we have five times the one and five times is the five elements is the five senses right and so you know that the five is also the test there is a test coming to you now i wanted to see why is the blade coming to you and on the mother piece tarot came the eight of wands and the eight of wands is connected with mercury in sagittarius so sagittarius blending is talking to you because we have the six and the eight creates a 14 right and the 14 is sagittarius the 10 and the four the wheel of fortune and the four right the emperor see very clearly that you are now very action oriented she is though facing towards this sword she is shooting one more arrow in the direction of this sword that is coming down not the sword that is actually pointing up right now of course i can also put this card here then she is facing both right and so if i put it here of course then it looks like these arrows are all going in here into this card right and just that you understand right the 14 then becomes a five and the five is again that test that we are looking for now mercury in sagittarius is all about you knowing that you can take action and that when you take action this kind of action things happen really fast now this woman is half human half horse and she's shooting her last arrow to follow these seven arrows the seven that was here the magician and the six i'm just gonna put this down otherwise i get a cramp in my hand the seven right so here we shoot these seven into this but if i calculate then this all together because it's clear right it's like one and six and one then we have the eight you see that and so there is a very beautiful message here for you right recognize that that clear mind that clear thinking is now talking to you and wanting you to understand that the information that is coming right now can also be brought up it's coming down as that foolish idea from the fool and the magician is the inspiration and with that ins that foolish idea the inspiration is to bring it up and to give it all right the eight is the infinite and the interesting thing always with the magician he has the infinite at his head right that's a state of consciousness on the position of the high priestess comes you the queen of swords now look at her again and look at this card again you see why i'm picking these old old cards because they are undeniably really clearly giving us information powerful information and both of them have 
the head cut off. Now what's interesting is she holds the cut off head in her left hand and she holds it in her right hand. Interesting, right? So we have always the right and the left. We have people facing the right, people facing the left, which she does, right? She faces the, the, the right and she faces the left. And the head is in a different position. And the sword also, right? Here she has the sword in the right and she has the sword in the left. And that's, in a way, telling you the same way you have a sword pointing down. It's like the heavenly information is coming down. And when you have a sword, which is not a really a sword, before a sword there is a blade. So it's almost like your ancestors are speaking to you, right? And the six is a holy number. It's the hexagram. It's the union of masculine and feminine in the two triangles that are interlacing. So you are recognizing that here the message is very strong because... This is the intuition. The high priestess brings intuition to for us. And the seventh zodiac sign and the two is a nine. So here you have a completion. You are arriving at what you want, how you want it, and who you can be, right? Even though this looks quite scary, right? She is the queen of the thrones of air. Queen of swords, right? So you are coming up. You are clearly speaking in your own reading because this is just to show you that this is your court card, right? I'm picking them so you can see that this is your court card. But now in this deck, you came up and this is why I am picking all these different decks. Then on the position of the Empress comes the star Aquarius. The hope that we never give up and also a blending, but a different blending. Look at that. So here she's blending back into the other cup. Here she's blending back into the earth. Here she has understood something more powerful than Sagittarius. Here she is here to give to the earth, to the water, to the earth, the energy it needs. And that's what the Empress does. The 17 plus the 3 is the 20. And that's the last judgment. That's the moment where the calling is coming to you, right? The calling to know what is important because then the 20 is the 2, right? Left. So the calling is to really be you. And this is also an air sign. This is Aquarius. Here is Libra, right? And so it's almost like you're having the help of an Aquarius. And you know what you're doing. But I could also calculate the 17 to an 8. And then the 3 makes it an 11. Now we have actually 5 ones plus another 2 ones. It's 7 times 1. And so... You can, of course, pick how you want to pick it. You can bring yourself to the 20 or you can get a portal and then you have seven times the one. You give birth to the hope. You give birth to what's important because the Empress is also connected with Venus. And so you understand this moment and Aquarius is connected with Uranus. And Uranus is ruling as well the fool. So this is the moment. The sword is coming down. Clearly, you understand that, that star above you. You are the star. You are now creating whatever it is that you're creating here down below in the duality. You are bringing that one clear thought down to the one and the seven, right? And remember, we did have a seven here through the six and the one, right? And we have seven arrows flying in the air. The other one is not yet out, 
right? And so clearly the seven and the one, right? The 10 more, the wheel of fortune with this, the hope to not to give up, right? To understand that you are the star, that the eight pointed star is here and that she always knows she's connected very clearly to her heart, to that part in her that matters. Then, on the position of the Libra, the justice energy comes here, the Two of Cups. The Two of Cups is a very beautiful card, and the Two is always that moment where we see that the Two is duality, but also the Two is Venus in Cancer, connected, right? So Venus in Cancer is bringing you healing and love, maybe through a relationship, right? Because here you have the 11. I cannot calculate that together. But if I would, the 11 and the 2 creates the 13. Back to actually Scorpio, right? Back to Aries. Your opposite sign is part of your destiny. And so here you are reaching an understanding in the love, a pure love, that maybe is also connected with an Aquarius, right? But she's turning her back to that. She is occupied with this. She is healing. She is clearly being connected. And here it's like the silver and the golden dolphin, right? And so, of course, we have the 11 and we have the 2. And the 2 is, again, the 2 that is in here in the key that you have found right the duality and the nine as the nine of the uh hermit which we have here the nine right that you find your intuition and that you don't need anybody you need yourself that's all if you need someone you need yourself and if someone comes he comes because He's just meant to be in your life and it works and it flows and it feels good and you can still do what you came here to do because that's the Empress, right? The Empress is, when I calculate it together as a 20, then we have a 2-2 two, two portal next to each other. So understand, right, that this is talking and that you are understanding that. Then on the position of the Queen of Swords, in the center of the reading, comes the Five of Pentacles. Now the Five of Pentacles is again the Five, the difficulty. The Five is that moment where we don't know who we really are, right, in a financial, in the material world. And it's connected with Mercury in Taurus. So we have here Mercury in Sagittarius. Now we have Mercury in Taurus. And Mercury brought the blade, the six, which can also be the lovers, right? That the lovers have found that one blade and so find that one coin and then see how things are sprouting out of that and that you don't have to give up anything, right? If you are... In a love relationship, you can also still search for or struggle with the five of pentacles. Now, the seven and the five is a 12. So here we have again the hanged man. Maybe have a look at this from a different perspective. See it not anymore as something negative, right? Sometimes being lost is good because then you can be found again. So when you feel lost in the way you are, in the way you are feeling also the tests, the severity, the difficulties, the financial difficulties. Know that with the hangman, you're just about to be actually with the two here, the 12, right? The reverse happens, the enlightening moment is coming, and then the three is left when we calculate the 12 together. So the three is the empress and the empress brought you the star you are the star right and so the 17 the 8 
plus the 5 is the 13 again, and the 13 is a 4. 4 is Aries, is the Emperor, is opposite of you, where you can learn and where you can understand what it's all about. On the position of Sagittarius, the blending comes the King of Pentacles, which is a Taurus. Now, this Mercury in Taurus, right? And now Taurus sitting here and looking into it and seeing that she is holding the corn, which is that richness, right? Knowing that for some reason, Sagittarius, the 14, calculated together also the 5 again, plus the 2 of self-worth, it's almost like this is challenging you to find your true self-worth. It's almost like this person is in your life so that you can find true self-worth. And it's really interesting. Sometimes there are some people in our life where we're like wondering, why are in my life? Well, because then if you have a problem with them, they actually help you, right? To be more clear in what you want and who you are because she's looking into this. And it's also connected here with temperance of this deck, right? The blending, the pouring into the two cups, right? And she's the second house of worth. And so recognize that when I put them all together, it's like a 2-2 two, two portal framing the five, right? And it's clear that you are learning to see that you are important and that you can see that the two coins fit with this two of cups and these two coins fit with the two or the second house of uh, self-worth and this one coin that's all you need right and if you understand this one coin you understand how this world is functioning really clear right and so understand that then on the position of the moon now the moon as the dream oracle comes here lost in space needing direction the number 36 now of course the three the empress the six here the blade right the blade that is pointing up it's almost like you're needing direction in looking up to the six right but here we get calculated together a nine and so the 18 of course is also nine a nine nine portal speaks here to you and you understand that the moon, which brought you the two of cups, is that if you feel lost, you find true love deep within you. The nine, the hermit, that love that we don't need anybody in the outside. Now, of course, I wanted to see why are you lost? And we got the five of pentacles again. Now, the Five of Pentacles here is a sacred geometrical structure. We have a triangle pointing here, and we have a triangle pointing here. And they're not interlacing, right, like the hexagram. So, as you can see, something is not yet clear in you. Now, you get another Five. Here she bakes bread. And in that baking bread, she is making sure that she can do the basic things in life, making out of corn, maybe the bread, maybe you need here the Taurus energy so you can bake the bread and maybe that's why you are lost, right? Just have a look, right? Sometimes it's really interesting, they're back to back she's facing out she wants the world and she's saying no you gotta clearly be more connected with the way money functions the self-worth 
that is speaking here through the Queen of Swords to you, right? Which gave you the 12, the hanged man, and then the 3. So we have the 9-9 nine, nine, and the 5 left, right? I don't calculate that together. Then on the position of the sun comes the animal kingdom, right? The companionship, the number 21, the three calculated together, but the 21 is also the world. And the world is filled with animals. And so the sun, which is in um, Sagittarius and brought you here, Taurus, right? The worth, the second house of self-worth, or worth in general, you find your worth through animals. And the 10 plus the 21, which is a 3, the 13, a big transformation can happen if you connect with these beautiful animals, right? Because they give you clearly worth. Right? You're worth because you give them food. But also, of course, they trust you and they feel that you are connected, really connected, not lost anymore. And so the 13 is speaking here and the 4 is left. And you remember the 4 is, of course, Aries. Now, I wanted to know why do these animals come to you? And the Ace of Pentacles came up. Now, you have twice the five of pentacles that's a five five portal i don't calculate that to a ten it's a five five portal so if i would i have a ten and a one i have an eleven then we have nine times the one very clear right very strong but it's a five five you have to find your self-worth your self-worth is not just only do basic things for survival, right? And being lost and searching for something that you cannot really have. But see now that here the Ace of Pentacles came reverse. Here lies a child. It played with this little tiger cup and these acorns. And there are one, two, three, four, five acorn cups lying on the carpet. Here's a fire and it fell asleep and the tiger cub is actually licking its belly. So what do we see? It's very interesting, right? She was baking bread. So the belly is full of the child and the tiger cub is actually acknowledging that, right? The tiger is actually in Alberto Villoldo, the um, mammalian brain. It's the second chakra, right? It's like finding that you are connected. And so in the reverse, it's almost like you are not acknowledging who you really are. That self-worth here with the five, twice you got the five, that self-worth. Recognize that your self-worth will be healed through animals. So maybe get an animal. Maybe get a dog, maybe get a cat, maybe get not one of those exotic animals because they don't really should live with us humans, but get a cat or a dog and you will learn that the cat loves you and you realize, wow, why am I not loving myself the way the cat or the dog is loving me, right? And then on the position of the universe, comes here the six, the lovers, and that's Gemini. And you see how beautiful this card is, right? The universe with the mandala and her in the center. And here is very eclectic picture of the uh, Gemini. And here the six, six portal, right? No that if I calculate these two together, it's also a six, right? If I don't see the other one, but you have a clear six, six portal here. And of course the six and the three, 
of the 21, you have here the 21. That's the world, right, that you're protecting. Now you're falling in love with yourself, right? You're falling in love because you also had this, right, the Two of Cups, which is Venus in Cancer, which is sharing it. It is a very beautiful energy. And so the six and then the three creates a nine again, right? So you have one, two, three times the nine. And now when I place this card, you understand that Gemini is also connected with the swords, right? He's the knight of swords. So you have actually the um, Aquarius. I'm going to put this down for a moment. You have Aquarius and you have Gemini, right, as companions of the sword family. And so if you see the sword here, that clear thought comes down and is letting you know again that the six and the one is a seven. The six and the one is a seven. And the seven arrows that you were shooting out there that are shooting into the seven of the blades, right? Remember, it's actually, of course, now here, right? But if I put it here, it's also then here, right? And so it's clear that something is talking to you. The six is saying, hey, you are understanding. You are wanting to hold that thought, hold that clear energy, and you know that something deep inside of you is bringing you the love, right? That here the wheel of fortune is literally saying, yes, that one, 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 one energy is here, right? Four times the one, just right here. That's again, of course, Aries, but we have nine times the one. And so understand that there is a beautiful message here. And of course, I want you to fill in the blanks, right? I'm just going to give you the numbers and somehow the etherical story, but you got to fill in the reality. And so you have that one sword that's coming down and you have that one blade that it's facing up. And here you have the lovers, right? And you are understanding that the 6-6 six, six is actually then helping you to really love yourself, right? Be creative in the way you love yourself. And so I hope you are getting this message in the right way, right? So that you can really truly love yourself and come into a completion three times the nine, right? Feeling empowered in the completion with here, the 29, the 11 portal. So I hope I see you in the next reading because that's when the earth continues its path and we see behind the sun Capricorn. And Capricorn, of course, is um, then the devil, are the attachments to certain energies. And we're going to look into that. And of course, there we have then Saturn playing its part. And Saturn, of course, here comes um, on the world, the six, right? The Gemini, the lovers. So we already get a message here. Until then, I thank you so much for being with me. Namaste.